Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to learn how to add a post crop vignette to our image as well as a little bit of grain in order to give us more of a vintage look. So under the effects area I have access to both the post crop vignetting as well as the grain option. As far as the vignetting goes, we have three different styles. The highlight priority will actually put the priority on the highlights around the edges of your images when you add the vignette. And what that means is it's going to actually try to recover those highlights. But if it recovers the highlights, it also might give you a little bit of a color shift. So we have a second style as well, which is the color priority. Here we're not going to use the highlight recovery, but we will make sure that there are no color shifts in your image. Finally, there's paint overlay, which is fine to use if you're going to deliver your final image for presentation on a screen, but just be a little bit cautious. Um, I tend to notice that if I print with this post crop vignette to set to paint overlay, it tends to get a little bit muddy. So I'm going to choose the color priority, and then for the amount, you'll notice if I move to the left, it will darken down the edges of my file. If I move to the right, it will lighten them. Let's go ahead and start by just darkening down those edges. I'm going to do this quite significantly so that we can look at the other options. So the midpoint, you'll notice as I move to the left, moves into the image or remains on the edges if I move it to the right. Let's move it in towards the center and then we can change the roundness. So as I move this over to the left, you'll notice that it becomes more of a rectangle. If I move it to the right, it's more of a circle. We can also add a feather to soften or harden those edges. To the left, it's going to make a hard edge, and to the right, it'll give us a nice soft edge. All right, so I have the shape defined the way I want it, but I want to change the amount, so I'll just decrease that a little bit. All right, now I'm actually going to crop the image. So I'll tap the R key, and I want to crop this to a square, so I'll select one to one for my aspect ratio, and then just reposition this and tap return or enter because I want to show you that while I was cropping, I actually couldn't see the post crop vignette, but after I crop the image, the post crop vignette is actually recreated based on the new dimensions of the image. So it will go ahead and conform to any crop that you have. All right, if I really want to make this look more vintage, then probably instead of adding a dark vignette, I'll want to add a light vignette. So I'll scoot all the way over to the right, and I'm also going to remove the feather, giving me a harder edge like this. Now we'll scroll down, and we have some options for grain. As I'm deciding how much grain I want to apply, I will typically zoom into my image to 100%, and in this case, I want to use the hand tool, and reposition it so I'm looking at my image in the sharp areas here, and then I will add the amount. I'll add a lot to be sure that we can see it on screen. So the amount is going to be how much grain and the amount of contrast in the grain. The size will actually increase the physical size of the grain, and then we can see with the roughness, if I move it over to the right, it looks a lot rougher, a lot blotchier. If I move it over to the left, you can see it's almost like I get this reticulation effect, which is an effect that you used to be able to get as you processed your film in the darkroom. So really, these are all just aesthetic choices. All you need to do is move the sliders to get the amount of grain that you want. If you are going to be printing this, I would make sure that you do a few tests in order to see the amount of grain as it is applied on paper because I tend to think that what the amount of grain is that looks good on the screen is a little bit different when I actually print the image. All right, so let's just zoom out a little bit here. And then to make just one final adjustment to this image, if I really do want it to look more vintage, I'll scroll up to the tone curve area. I want to decrease my blacks. And your tone curve might look a little bit different. It depends on if you are in this parametric curve right here that has all these sliders. Or if you scroll down and you click on this icon right here, this is actually the point curve. This is the curve that I prefer because it allows me to put points anywhere on the curve. And I can quickly select my black point here in the lower left hand corner and just drag up, which is basically restricting or limiting the darkest value of my image. And you see that a lot with the kind of vintage images or the images that are made to look older. They won't have a true black in them. So that's an easy way to control that with the tone curve. 
So there you go, post-crop vignetting as well as grain effects and the tone curve in Lightroom. I'm Julianne Koss, thanks for watching.